Race one produced a red hot battle for the win between the King of Aragon, Chaz Davies, and the current King of World Superbike, Jonathan Ray. A mistake from the Welsh rider, Gifted Ray, his fifth win of the season as he sets his sights on total domination. But Ray won't have it all his own way in race two as the grid reshuffle comes into effect. The, cham the champion starting down in ninth for the third time in 2017. Don't go anywhere. The action is just getting started here in Aragon. Here we go, an overview of the Aragon circuit. Five kilometers long, 2.8 miles, total of 17 corners. Very difficult on the right-hand side of the tire. Just seven right corners, especially when the track is cold. High winds here at Aragon today. Then we have 10 left-hand corners. That turn 16, 17 combination really demanding on that left-hand side of the Pirelli. We've been racing here since 2011 with Melange claiming the first win. Total of 13 World Superbike races. Chaz Davies did the double last year. Here is Sector 1. Running just past Turn 5. Then Sector 2 takes it down just towards Turn 11 before the run in front of the Aragon Wall in Sector 3. Which then leads us onto the back straight. And then up onto the start finish line. Just two corners in that fourth sector. Race 1 winner here to this week. And was, of course, Jonathan Ray after that incredible battle with that man there, Chaz Davies, who still holds the race lap record. The day in World Superbike Race 2, it's sure to be a dramatic race. Jordi Torres is looking to get a boost from the home fans who have come in their thousands to watch him do battle as he sets starts from the front row. It's a hot race there for Forres. Yamaha will be 1-2 on that front row with Lowe starting on pole for race two for the second time ahead of teammate Michael Vandermark. Meanwhile, Chaz Davies is looking for a second chance, a chance at redemption after crashing out of the lead in race one on Saturday. It's all about that man there, Jonathan Ray. Can he continue his unstoppable run and make it six from six in 2017? Welcome to Motorland Aragon. The clouds are gathering in the sky, but it is still a beautiful day here. Winds not deterring the crowd. There you can see the grandstands bulging with fans. The trees, however, struggling to stay upright. 24 degrees track temperature. Quite an interesting temperature, which we'll get to in just a second. My name is Harry Lloyd. Joining me is Stephen English. They're 19 miles per hour wind speed. Very, very rough. 32 kilometers an hour. A hard race for these World Superbike riders here at Modeland Aragon Circuit. Race two coming up in just a few minutes time there. We can see everybody in pit lane. Pit lane opening in just over six and a half minutes time when the riders will leave. Start forming up for the grid. It is that man there, Jonathan Ray, currently top of the world. 125 points, five race wins from Five races, he starts down in ninth place yet again. The third time he started down in ninth in race two. In total, he's lost 23 grid positions thanks to this new race two grid reshuffle. But he might be the biggest loser in terms of grid positions, but he's been the biggest winner in terms of points this year. Definitely, Harry, when you look at what Jonathan Ray has done so far this season. Five from five, but yesterday he really had to scrap for it. He had to really win that race. But, and uh, the battle between himself and Chaz Davis really was something to behold. But we saw them change lead numerous times in those final couple of laps. And ultimately, a mistake from Davis at turn 16 opened the door. And Jonathan Ray was able to come through and take that fifth win in a row. But uh, right now, you're looking at uh, a rider on the, the crest of a wave of confidence there. Ray has got momentum with him. And just like anything else, once you've got that little bit of a, a run started, it can be very difficult to make it stop for his rivals. And you're seeing... Jonathan Ray really just take advantage of that momentum building, building, building. And uh, that's what we've seen so far through this season. And just look at some of these pictures from yesterday. Great scrap between the two riders. Absolutely unbelievable. Fantastic stuff there. Unfortunately, Chaz Davies did go down, just trying to leave his braking a bit too late into the penultimate corner. Huge shock in the Ducati box. Chaz Davies now slips to third in the championship, 55 points behind Jonathan. And you were having a chat with him yesterday. And he says uh, he's not really too sure of the exact math of it, but he knows that he has to go out there and just focus on winning as much as he can. Chaz Davis said that basically with the crash and those 
final five, six laps of the race, he started to lose a bit of feeling with the front and it started really just to have the weight transfer change quite a bit as the tyre got worn and uh, really Davis just uh, lost the lost the front end and uh, ran in a bit too hot into that last corner. If you look at uh, the pictures from yesterday, you'll see just on the video that uh, the gap between Davis and Ray really just opens up really, really quickly on the way into the entry of that corner. So maybe just a small mistake on the way in from Davis as well with that weight transfer, just not able to really get on the brakes as he wanted to. And uh, that's what uh, caused that instant for him. Davis just saying that uh, really with the gap as it is in the championship now, it's 55 points to Jonathan Ray. The key thing for him is just to start winning races. Yep, and a man who could potentially be on for a race win, certainly a podium here, I reckon, is Alex Lowe. It starts from pole position for the second time this year in race two. An incredible charge through the field from 12th for the Brit on that Yamaha after a technical problem in Super Bowl two. Absolutely unbelievable ride, in all honesty. Yeah, I have to say, that was probably the best race I've ever seen from Alex Lowe. We saw him have a crash on his first flying lap on uh, free practice three, a technical problem on his out lap in Super Bowl one, uh, Super Bowl two, and uh, Lowe's did one lap on that bike before uh, coming to the grid, and uh, he was able to come from 12th all the way through to 4th. Gives him that uh, pole position for today's race as well, but uh, really, when you look at Lowe's so far this season, just mature rides in each race so far. He's taken as many points as he can from each of the races so far, and really, it's been impressive for him. You can look into the other side of the Yamaha pit box now with Michael Vandermark and another good performance from Vandermark yesterday to finish inside that top five. He'll start second on the grid today, and again, Vandermark just continuing to learn that bike, continuing to improve with it. And uh, it's been a solid opening two and a half rounds for the Dutchman. Yeah, that Pata Yamaha team seem on the cusp of something really, really great. Surely a breakthrough is going to come for them. It could be next round. Of course, we do go to Assen after this, the home round of that man there, Michael Vandermark. A couple of issues for him in morning warm-up. Didn't get set a lap time. But we'll be starting second on the grid, right beside his teammate Lowe's, as we said, on pole. With then Jordi Torres up there in third. A really strong ride for Torres as well. Terrible start on the BMW. Dropped way down the field and then made up ground there. You can see a neck bandage, unfortunately, for Torres, as you saw in the introduction to our program. Torres is a Ducati quarter light. Torres tried his best to get it to there. Here is the replay. He tried his best to get it to the wall with the marshals, but did eventually have to abandoned ship some quite severe burns to him actually and he's going to do his best to try and compete in the race today yeah Fares with a crash at the start of the race and really had been doing very well because he had been able to keep in touch with Melandri and Sykes in that fight that would eventually be for uh, the podium spots but uh, Fares just had a, a small crash at turn one took the front and then uh, as you saw there afterwards with a, a fiery exit from the race but uh, a brave decision from Fares to be able to come in and make the start today because it does seem like there were quite a lot of burns for him in his upper body, his arms, and then as we saw his neck as well. But you can see Julian Saman here scored points yesterday on his uh, World SBK debut and uh, solid performance from the former 125 Grand Prix champion on the Aprilia. Yeah, exactly. Job done for Julian Saman. 13th yesterday, picking up three points there on the Aprilia. Some good rides for Aprilia riders. Mikado was up there inside the top 10, just ahead of Eugene Laverty on that factory RSV4 RF. So a great return for Teddy Mikado. A pretty solid resi result, in all honesty, for these two boys here. Nicky Hayden, Stefan Bridal. Bridal ninth, Hayden 10th in race one. Both bikes inside the top 10. Progress being made for Honda. It's been pretty slow without the chance to test, obviously racing first in Phillip Island and then in Thailand. But that bike, more time, more data, everything's coming. I was talking to a couple of people and it seems like Nicky Hayden has been able to sort out the engine brake a fair bit. So that's now working consistently. We saw in Thailand, Hayden definitely struggling with some technical issues, but those kinks starting to be ironed out. Yeah, the engine braking improving, but the rear end still sliding a lot once the like so Nicky Hayden or Stefan Bradle gets on the gas. And that's uh, still just a work in progress for them to be able to really understand this bike and get the most from it. But uh, Nicky Hayden, he'll start 12th on the grid um, with uh, Xavi Fares and uh, Chaz Davis in front of him on the fourth row. But uh, Nicky Hayden, just saying that uh, he had a great fight yesterday with Stefan Bradle and Eugene Laverty, but that it's a bit galling just to be 27 seconds behind the race leaders for Tom Sykes, a man that's uh, been feeling the effects of illness through this week with um, the English rider just uh, weakened by a bit of food poisoning or something they picked up on his flight over to here and uh, definitely affected him the last couple of days, he said, 
eating and drinking's been a bit of an issue and he's not alone in that there's a few mechanics a few engineers up and down the pit lane as well with the same with the same issue and uh, indeed quite a few within the crescent yamaha squad yep, unfortunate for them a world superbike weekend is tough enough when you're 100 healthy so it's made even worse when you're unfortunately a little sick no such issues for marco melandri there recording his best results since returning to World Superbikes when he was second, his seventh podium in Aragon, which is the same number of podiums that both Davies and Sykes have recorded. There you can see the Desmo Owners Club out in force. Audrey Caddy Spain, there's Flores on his Panigale, which bursts in flames. There's number one of Jonathan Ray. Johnny just uh, actually leaving pit lane there with one of a, a chest warmer, I believe the British call them a July there to try and keep warm, not something we usually see here in World Superbikes. There's the number seven of Chaz Davies, that Ducati team working pretty late into the night last night to get that bike all sorted out. For Davies, it was the first time in our, in first time anywhere that he didn't convert a pole to a win in a dry race. He had managed to convert five previous poles into five previous wins. What can he do from 10th place? We know that both Davies and Ray are some of the best starters in this paddock and you know they're all there together Melandry and Sykes there down on that third row as well could we see a surprise here from Taddy Mercado starting up in fourth an incredible return for the Argentinian rider missed the first two rounds and missed some testing as well due to uh, some broken ribs and a punctured lung sustained in a training accident but he's back on track and at the moment here Lowe's Lowe's has actually been the biggest benefactor overall from this new grid two race to reshuffle system. Lowe's has gained a total of 16 places from where he's qualified. So he gained 11 places, having started race one down in 12th and now starting it up in first place. There you can see Jonathan Raiders with that body warm on, trying to keep as much heat in him as he can. The wind here in Aragon is continuing to pick up, actually. It's going to be very, very tricky, especially if it is a headwind into turn one. A couple of umbrellas there in the grandstands just getting blown about. Tom Sykes leaving it pretty late to leave. Pit lane closing in just over two minutes. So back to the grid to reshuffle. We said that Lowe's gained 11 places, which is the most that we've seen anybody gain so far. And I did a little bit of math, a little bit of thinking, and the theoretical most amount of places you can gain from race one to race two in the standard 21 full-time rider field is 20. So if you were to qualify in 21st and then race to fourth, you would go from having started in 21st to starting on pole position. So that would be a pretty incredible result. It could be that man there who does it at some point. As we said, Lowe's so strong in yesterday's race, riding out of his skin to get past his teammate and doing an absolutely incredible job. If he starts at the front, watch out for the British rider. Watch out for this man here, Chaz Davies. He'll line up in 10th spot on the grid. As we said, he's a good starter. Fortunately, he'll have Ray Melandry and Sykes ahead of him, so he might be punching a hole through the rest of them here today. Just to see how it does all unfold. Just a couple of facts and figures for you here today. Jonathan Ray was able to give Great Britain their 200th win in World Superbike history, the first ever country to reach that goal. Interestingly enough, actually, Jonathan Ray gave them their 100th win back at the Nürburgring in 2009. So some great facts and figures there for Johnny. It was also his fifth straight win since the beginning of the season. In race two, Johnny could equal the second longest streak of victories at the start of a championship set by Troy Bayless in 2002 when he took six wins in a row. The all-time record is held by 2003 champion Neil Hodgson. And of course, in 2003, Hodgson did go on to take the crown there. So once again, your front row is Lowe's, Vandermark and Torres, two Yamahas and a BMW. There is the man who will start in second place. Further down the field, we have Roman Ramos. He's starting in 14th. Unfortunately, he saw an 18-race string of point-scoring finishes come to an end. Missed a consistency, failing to get it done there because of a technical problem. Just five seconds until the pit lane exit does close. It looks like everybody is out there on track, so there shouldn't be too much drum. There's Jordi Torres, Spanish Elvis, as they call him, just getting his headphones on, listening to a bit of music and centering himself before we go racing. Torres there up. Six on the grid, now starting third. Torres has gained a total of 12 positions 
in these second races there. You can see seventh, seventh, best of fifth, and then a sixth place in race one. So pretty solid result. Clearly the leading BMW rider in the Altea team. As we see Lowe's just getting pushed up. Pushed up the start finish straight there on the number 22 Yamaha. As we said, difficult weekend for Lowe's technical issues and crashes. Michael Vandermark, he'll be looking to avoid any technical issues after he was unable to start the race two restart in Thailand due to an oil leak. There's that DNF, that little blot on his otherwise pretty consistent record, always in the top 10. Now with some really solid pace after adapting to that Yamaha. As we said, the Pata team seemed to be on the cusp of something really, really big with that new R1 after a, a bit of a difficult season last year, making its debut in the World Superbike Championship. We've got those gremlins sorted. Now seem to be on track. Johnny Ray there with the Pirelli Best Lap Award, of course. Johnny Ray setting the fastest lap of the race in race one. Nice and warm there, trying to stay as warm as possible. As we said, very, very high wind here. Would play a role. Certainly will be difficult on those tyres. Lowe's just making sure that everything is all okay. And I believe we now have Steve English down on the grid with Leon Camia lining up in 15th place. Leon Camier, it's been a difficult weekend so far, but uh, what's the hope for race two? And just looking at the wind conditions as well, it's pretty tricky for the riders. Even on the outlap, it's so different to ride the track. Um, yeah, I was sort of running wide and in weird, strange places. Uh, yeah, even on the sighting lap. So I think there's, it's going to make for an interesting race for sure. Uh, we've gambled again a little bit more of the setup just to try and help, help make the bike work. Uh, we had some decent problems yesterday in the second race in the first race so fingers crossed no problems uh, the setting works and we can uh, at least put up a good fight to, to try and be in the top 10 for golf thanks mate top 10 the golf for Camille, but as he said conditions will play a role there's albert arenas and john mcphee john mcphee currently second in the moto 3 world championship a great debut for john and the british talent team albert arenas unfortunately crashing out of that race in qatar as he was charging Towards the points, great to see some of the MotoGP field, and it looks like we're now going to chat to Nicky Hayden on the grid as well. Nicky Hayden, yesterday's race one, you said that it was a good scrap between yourself, Bradley and Laverty, but just the gap to the front a little bit too big at the minute. Yeah, I mean the gap to the front is a lot, but we were a little bit better in the warm up. So uh, let's see here. I mean the track temperature is about the same, but the wind is really, really strong. Uh, could make a things a little bit interesting, especially up top four or five is a pretty good strong side wind on angle and tailwind on the back straightaway. So uh, yeah, let's go for it. I mean, a few worse, spots worse on the grid today, but uh, let's see. When you've got a wind like this, Nicky, as well, just looking at how long you have to stay off that right-hand side of the tire, once you come to the first couple of right-handers on the lap, how tough is that? Well, the first right-hander turn two is definitely uh, an issue because it is a long time on the left side of the tire and the wind makes a difference and that corner is tricky. You see a lot of gas crash on the front there with the cold tire. But I think more uh, the problem is the side wind and even the tail wind down the end of the back straightaway getting it stopped uh, for the gearing and for the uh, getting sucked in. Wind, 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 wind. There you can see one of the Red Bull Hunter girls with her hair blowing in the wind. The wind causing a lot of a stir here. There's Stefan Bridal. He will line up on the grid in sixth place, his best starting position so far. Steve, you're obviously down there on the grid. Just how bad is the wind down there? Is it really as bad as all these riders are saying? Yeah, Harry, it is very windy down here on the grid. And even when you look at some of the helmets sitting on the bikes for the riders, you see them move around. So it does just show you just how much of a wind is blowing here. And as Nicky Hayden said, will make things very difficult for the riders just with that crosswind coming in to those early couple of corners on the lap. Great stuff there, Jonathan Ray. As we said, all bundled up, trying to stay warm. They just saw his perfect record. Five races, five number ones for the number one. Chaz Davies here, as he saw at the start. Time for a comeback, time for a second chance for Chaz Davies. 52 podiums, 20 wins, four pole positions, 132 starts. Can he get back up on the podium today? That blot six in Thailand after crashing, restarting the race, and then a DNF here in Aragon. Could that be the difference between success and disaster and now we have the man who did a great comeback teddy mercado with steve pretty yesterday and first race back for the year and gives you something really to build on for today 
Yeah, we want to try to to be closer to the to the front guys. You know, we part we start from second row, so we uh, we make uh, this morning the warm up. We make a change to try to have more more grip in the rear that we missed yesterday. So we, I hope we can make a good race. Uh, for sure, uh, today is more windy than yesterday, so the condition is going to be more difficult. So we see you. We, we want to do our best. Uh, we, we see where we're going to ride. Thanks, Andy. And Harry, you can hear there again just another rider just talking about the wind and the difficulty and the conditions for everyone here in the course of this race. And now we're going very different compared to yesterday, where it was all about track temperature. Now it's just about how you're going to deal with that wind. Motorcycle racing fans should probably look to get themselves a degree in weather study. Of course, the MotoGP race in Qatar, that was dictated by the weather. And it looks like once again, weather will play a major role here in Aragon. Those high winds, the topic of conversation with everybody affecting that front tire. There's Ramos, Mr. Consistency. His run came to an end, his points run beginning last year in Donington, and unfortunately ending yesterday with a technical problem. There is a bit of a wave to the camera. And now we're going to go here from John McPhee, who was second in the Moto3 race in Qatar. John McPhee, a bit of a bus driver's holiday for you here at Aragon this weekend. Yeah, it's really nice to come along and watch. You know, first, first World Superbike I've done since I was about 10 years old. So, uh, yeah, really exciting. Have you got any riders that uh, you're really be keeping an eye on or helping this weekend? Uh, I wouldn't say helping, but definitely uh, someone that I'm supporting is Chaz Davies and Leon Camier. Um, I've been training with them guys pre-season, so uh, yeah, I think think Chaz can go well. Obviously, yes, they're a little bit unlucky there with the crash, but he showed that he, he was he was on for a win, so hopefully he can turn that around today and, and finish on the top step. Thanks, John. Always great to get a rider's insight, of course. John, a Grand Prix winner, winning on the Peugeot. Mahindra back in Berno in those soaking wet conditions. Marcos Reiterberger, he starts 13th. Bit of a, a war of words between him and Krumenacker in the press last night. Bit of a disagreement about who was waiting for a tow from who and all that sort of thing. There is Randy Krumenacker, number 88, starts 16th. He's had five starts so far. He's collected some pretty decent points so far for a World Superbike rookie. Of course, that Pachetti Racing Team stepping up from the World Supersport Championship alongside the Swiss former Moto2 rider. Rumnacker also a former 125cc rider on the Grand Prix scene. Had, a, had an interesting race here in Aragon, one year with Mar Marquez at the first corner. Another former Moto2 rider, a former 125cc world champion, Julian Simon, he scored a couple of points on his World Superbike debut. Job well done for Simon. Bit of a last minute call up, as unfortunately Lorenzo Savadori is sitting out this weekend due to that neck, neck injury picked up in Thailand with that gruesome crash, oil spill all over his rear tyre and just flicking him off. And then there is Ricky Russo. He starts 19th on the grid, just ahead of Ayrton Badovini. Unfortunately, Andre Jezek, the Czech rider, is missing due to a concussion. And I believe we're going to go chat to a team boss with Steve. Sean Muir, team boss from Milwaukee, a brilliant. It's been a difficult opening couple of races of the year. Yeah, we're not going to hide behind that one. We're, uh, we, we've struggled so far. Um, we're desperate for this test tomorrow to try, uh, you know, really make some dramatic changes with the electronic side of it. So we're pretty convinced the chassis is where it needs to be. And, um, you know, we've just been, you know, listening to the advice of what the Aprilia engineers have been giving us from the old bike. And it's, it's just not working with this new one. And we, we've got to make some big steps forward. He's doing some new upgrades for this race, but uh, obviously with Tani Makata have done well on the Aprilia as well. Difficult situation for the team. Absolutely, but you know, it's been a blessing in disguise. We've got to take a positive from it, you know. Uh, Eugene raced with him yesterday and followed Tati, and he, he simply can't put the bike where he can put his bike. Uh, you know, we needed more power from Thailand, and we've immediately got that. You know, we've come here now. We knew the two flyaways, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to make major changes because the bikes were stuck over there. Um, but the Aprilia engineers have come back. We've got some good horsepower, and we're consistently in the top of the speed track figures. But if you can't stop the bike, and you can't turn the bike, then uh, we ain't going to be in the, in, in, in the shelf for, for getting near the podium. And that's physically impossible for Eugene to do what he wants to do with the bike. End off. Thanks, John. Straight talking there, as always, from the head of that Milwaukee Aprilia squad, of course, running BMWs last year, and hoping for more success with the Italian brand this year there's everybody just on the grid steve any last minute tire changes or anything like that going on any last minute panics or is everybody set with about three minutes to go well, it looks like everyone's pretty much set harry just for what they want to do i think everyone's aware of just how windy it is and aware of the conditions and they're just trying to make it work for the course of this race 
excellent stuff as we see the Seat safety car just rip off through turn one gonna have to be very careful into turn one it's a very tight left hand we saw certainly in the stock thousand race in both 2016 and 2015 some huge incidents there so hopefully everybody does get through there safely there we see Tom Sykes as Steve said fighting a bit of illness just getting his earplugs in there as the grid does start to be cleared we will have one formation lap and then we will be go 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 for race two here in Motorland Aragon as Nicky Hayden climbs aboard his Honda difficult start to the year for that Honda team as they continue to adjust that bike after getting it very very late into 2016 just about two weeks before they were meant to go testing so uh, there will be a test here on Monday with most of the Superbike teams which would hopefully provide a pretty big boost and give everybody some new parts ahead of the Aston round. There's Eugene Laverty, as we heard, struggling to be able to put that bike where he wants to put it. You need to keep working away with the Aprilia engineers, keep chipping away at it. I'm sure those podiums will come back to the former World Superbike race winner. There we see Torres, Vandermark and Lowe's. 3-2-1 on the grid. Who will lead into turn one? It's going to be tight, it's going to be tough. We've seen that BMW struggle there off the line a little bit. And also watch for Ray, Melandry, Sykes and Davies coming down from the third and fourth rows. All of them very, very good starters. Big thumbs up there. Ready to get fighting there for Lowe's. He punches the air. Just his last minute warm up, warm up, stretching it out. It's almost time to go racing here in Aragon. Here we go, race two, World Superbikes at Motorland Aragon. The starting grid, here it is. Lowe's lines up on pole, thanks for being fourth in race one. Vandermark there in second, ahead of Torres. Mercado leads Laverty and Bridal. Nice mix of manufacturers there. Confirmation that Jezek has been declared unfit due to concussion. Sykes starts seventh, ahead of Melandry and Johnny. Chaz looking to make amends, ahead of Forres and Hayden. Then it's Ryderberger, Ramos, and Kamia, Krumanaka, Simon, and De Angelis on row six. Russo there ahead of Badavini. Looking to get through a race without any technical problems for the Italian as we go for our warm up lap. Watch out for that wind, as Kamia was saying, even on that out lap, really hard to stay online. As they tiptoe through turn one there, now through turn two. Turn to the first right hander after a fair few lefts. So watch for that corner once we are going racing. Because that right hand side of the tyre will be a little bit chilly. A very windswept Stephen English has during this back in the booth. I will just let him get settled before we hear his points. There you can see 24 km an hour winds, 26 degrees ground temperature. So the track continuing to heat up. It started the morning at about 19 when the World Super Sport bikes went out. There's Johnny Wright, the number one. There we just see the field filtering through. Looks like everybody just taking their time, trying to get some heat into those tyres as they come through turn eight and nine. The corkscrew, always a great, great passing opportunity. Can line up a couple of different moves there. Look at his Eugene Lavity leading the warm-up lap out on track. Of course, no points for leading the warm-up lap. And there you can see World Superbike celebrating its 30th year. 61 Spanish riders have participated in World Superbike amongst the 589 races. 37 wins for Spaniards and one championship. Of course, Carlos Checa in 2011, the last championship for Ducati as well. Ruben Zaus, another notable Spaniard in this World Superbike Championship now. The likes of Fores and Torres looking to emulate what they did. Greg Gregorio Lavia, now technical director of the championship. He was a former Racer here too, then went over to BSB, had huge success there. There you can see the championship standings. Ray from Sykes, Davies drops to third after that crash. It happened there yesterday, everybody gets through there. Okay, so far Melandry moves up into fourth. 47 points separating Ray from Sykes after just five races. Harry, just looking at the tyre sheet from Pirelli, it looks like most of the field going pretty much uniform with it. But a couple of changes from yesterday, yesterday with Chaz Davis changing from the medium compound rear tyre, the B-spec rear tyre, which Jonathan Ray will use in today's race, to the A-spec tyre, which is the softest of the rear tyres. So Chaz Davis just going a little bit different to what he did yesterday in terms of tyre choice. Interesting to see how that will unfold. There is your pole man for this race, Lowe's, as we said, he's made a huge number of positions, 16 in total, thanks to this grid to reshuffle. 
There is Davies down in 10th. DNF crashing out, therefore forced to choose his grid position based on his Super Bowl time. Of course, the top nine decided by race results. What will happen in race two? It's almost time to find out. The lights will go red, and when they go out, we will be racing here in Aragon once again. They're on, and they're on for a long time. And away we go. A great start there from both the Yamaha boys. Lows off like a rocket. Teddy Mercado up there as well. Jonathan Ray making up space. It's been a huge start for Marco Melandri there. Chat. No, that's Tom Sykes there around there. So an incredible start for Sykes to come through. Eugene Laverty up there in just second on the Aprilia, forcing Michael Vandermark a little wide. Yeah, and this is what we saw from Laverty in the opening couple of rounds as well. Just able to make good starts in race two and take advantage of that grid reshuffle. He's up into second. But good start as well from Tom Sykes as well on the Kawasaki. But you can see Vandermark just trying to get back down the inside of Laverty and uh, tries to make the move stick, but it should give a little bit of a run for the rest of the riders on those two as we come into the ever tiding turn seven. Lowe's off like a rocket as Tom Sykes tries to wrestle it through on Eugene Labby. Lowe's already has an advantage of 0.7 of a second through the first sector. Lowe's has one thing in mind, and that's victory. Yeah, we saw yesterday just how consistent Lowe's was able to run, and the key thing for him is take advantage of this scrap behind them to give him that uh, edge. Even just talking to Nicky Hayden down the grid, he said just how disappointing it was to be so far behind the race leaders. But Aragon is a track that if you break away from someone, it's very difficult to make that time back. If you're a little bit off the pace here, it can end up being quite a long way off the pace as the race progresses. With Jonathan Ray getting down the inside of Marco Melandri. And a good move there from Ray on the th number 33 Ducati. And uh, just with uh, Eugene Lamberty behind them. But uh, good start from Ray and from uh, Tom Sykes as well to be able to push themselves through into that uh, third, fourth and fifth position with uh, Melandri up there as well. It is currently Lowe's from Vandermark, from Sykes, from Johnny, from Melandri, from Lavity, from Davies as we come down the back straight. Taddy Mercado there holding off the Hondas of Hayden and Bradle, the two once, to, once again on track to get that. Another terrible start for Jordi Torres down in 13th place after starting on that front row. And the big winners in the, in the opening lap of the race is to see Chaz Davis just get down the inside of Eugene Lavity as well. So Davis coming from 10th on the grade up to 6th. We've also had Jonathan Ray come from 9th to 5th, ninth to 3rd, and uh, Tom Sykes up into 4th as well. So the guys that were put back in the shuffle, all recovering well in these early laps. There's still Lowe's who leads, continue to try and stretch that advantage. His teammate there in the second, just holding off Jonathan Ray by about half a second. But with Ray comes Sykes, comes Melandry, comes Davies. So you have to think that once one of them gets through, they all will be through there. Big gains there for Ray, up six places. Davies up four as well, but it is Lowe's who has maintained his position on the grid, and that is the number one position currently leading this race by half a second as Johnny Ray comes up the inside of Michael Vandermark. Vandermark tries to respond, can't quite do it. Can Johnny now close that gap to Lowe's, or will it be the bridge too far? Yeah, we saw JR able to hold those tighter lines yesterday as well and uh, make some moves through there on Chaz Davis yesterday. It's Michael Vandermark today with the Yamaha rider having to take that wider line just to take advantage of what the, of what the Yamaha does well. We can see the two caddies at the back of this pack with number 33, Marco Melandri, number seven, Chaz Davis, both inside the top six and uh, starting to put the pressure on Tom Sykes. Tom Sykes coming under a lot of pressure. He and Marco Melandri have had a couple of great battles already this year. Teddy Mercado there just on the back of this leading group. A great ride again from the Argentinian. Looks like Eugene Lavity has continued to lose positions. Looks like Lowe's will lead down that back straight once again. Jonathan Ray just taking it nice and steady. Closing down that gap by a tenth here and there. Not rushing too much. Marco Melandri, one of the faster guys down here. Due to his size. Looks like he's going to try and slipstream past Tom Sykes on the brakes. Can't quite do it. Sykes does defend that fourth place from the Italian. Then you can see Melandri just getting down the inside, taking that tight line through turn 16 and 17. And Melandri able to make the move, but let's see if he's able to maintain that on the way down into the first corner as well. But good move through the final couple of corners there for Melandri. Tom Sykes trying to answer back, but Melandri laid enough on the brakes and able to hold them off. And you can see just at the front, uh, Jonathan Ray, eight tenths of a second faster than Alex Lowe's last time around. You can see Michael van der Mark now coming under pressure from Marco Melandri as well. Melandri knows that he can't let Jonathan Ray get out of reach. Exactly, Melandri is trying to wriggle his way through as fast as he can. Of course, Melandri looking for a return to the top step of the podium. He's been on the podium a fair bit since coming back, but not on that top step as Jonathan Ray is now right with Lowe's. You can see Ray just carrying a little bit more corner speed through there on Lowe's, but not able to make the same move that he made on Michael Vandermark last time around. So it's still Lowe's leading at the front from the number one of Jonathan Ray, but uh, solid stuff from both the Yamaha riders in the early goings here. We've seen both Ducatis, both Kawasaki's, recover and get back from that third and fourth row grid slots 
to get straight into the lead fight, but now the Yamaha riders are in there as well. This is what we wanted with the grid shuffle. We wanted the likes of Lowe's and Vandermark just to be in this lead group at the start of the races. Let's see if they're able to hold into it. Exactly, Yamaha, as we said, really establishing set themselves now, having returned to World Superbike as a factory effort last year. As we go on board with Jonathan Ray looking at the back of that R1M of Lowe's as we come down towards turn 14 and 15. Hard on the brakes here. Will Lowe's take the tight line to try and defend from Jonathan Ray? He sweeps around there, try and get good drive onto the straight. It's going to be interesting to see the Kawasaki versus the Yamaha down the back straight. Yeah, you could see when we rode on board just that uh, Jonathan Ray wasn't really able to take that much of an advantage under the brakes on the edge. And uh, Lowe's was able just to maintain that position. Marco, Marco Melandri takes a third position for Michael Vandermark. This time it's on the entry to turn 16. Last time around he was able to make the moves through 16 and 17 on Tom Sykes. But good stuff for Melandri there to be able to make some progress and get through into third position. The Italian riding really well on his comeback to World SBK. And they're just chasing down Jonathan Ray. Last time around he was about a quarter of a second faster than the Kawasaki rider. And you can see he's just closing in ever so slightly on the number one Kawasaki. Behind that it's still Vandermark with Davis in front of Tom Sykes. You can see a replay of Marco Melandri just comfortably able to make that move. He's been the fastest man down that back straight for pretty much the whole weekend. Marco, such a small guy, able to get in very tight behind the fairing. But you can see Jonathan Ray going around the outside to take the lead from Alex Lowe's. Good move there from Jonathan Ray. Let's see if Alex is able to answer back on that. We know that the Kawasaki's a fast machine, but can he be aggressive and try and make something in these early goals? Yeah, meanwhile, Marco Melandri is now right with those leading to it. Looks like Melandri is also hunting for a way through on those. Will he repeat the move that he did on his teammate Michael Van Mark just one lap ago? Can he stick with Jonathan Ray and take the fight down to the last lap like his teammate Chaz Davies tried to do yesterday? And the important thing to remember is if you look back to Australia when Lowe's was in this kind of situation as well, he was willing to make moves on, the, on his rivals around him. So maybe we'll see something from Alex just trying to push for that first podium in a couple of years. But you can see Marco Melandri starting to get a little bit impatient there from Melandri. He wants to get through as quickly as he can so that he can keep chasing down Jonathan Ray. That's a great battle brewing here at the front. Look, Vandermark is now right there as well, bringing Chaz Davies and Tom Sykes with him. Taddy Mikado not too far off this group either, proving that there is still life in that Aprilia, proving that Taddy Mikado doesn't need to be at the first two races to be right up there. And you can see Melandri, just like he did last time around on Michael Vandermark, able to use the slipstream and the top speed advantage of the Ducati to get through on Lowe's into 16, but running a little bit wide. Lowe's trying to hold that inside line. Let's see if Alex is able to attack back, but no, it's comfortable enough for Marco Melandri. Good move from the Italian to take second. Let's see if he's able to give chase and stick with Jonathan Ray. Yesterday, there was a big difference between Jonathan Ray, Chaz Davis, and the likes of Melandri and Sykes behind them. So let's see if maybe some changes overnight have given Melandri a bit more potential. Last time around, again, he was a quarter of a second faster than the race leader. Yep, speaking of Davies, he's now breathing down the neck of Michael Vandermark and Lowe's also coming back into the clutches of his teammate and the Welsh rider. Really interesting to see what will happen between Melandri and Ray at the front. We haven't seen those who have a really long full race battle this entire year. They've done it for a couple of corners like in Thailand, but then Johnny has been able to break away from the returning Italian. So hopefully Melandri will be able to take the fight to him. There we see Tom Sykes just on the back and Taddy Mikado hanging on for dear life. Meanwhile, Stefan Bradl has gotten ahead of Eugene Lavity. Nicky Hayden in 10th. Jordi Torres on a charge once again, just like yesterday for the Spanish rider, currently the leading Spaniard there on that BMW machine. It's great to see the Yamaha's now up in the mix as well. We're so used to seeing Ducati and Kawasaki fighting for domination of this World Superbike Championship, but the Yamaha's now keeping them honest. Auto back to go, Marco Vandermark there, right behind Johnny Ray. Michael Vandermark trying to find a way through on his teammate, can't quite do it yet. Everybody's still together, just on two seconds, splitting the top seven riders from Johnny Ray down to Taddy Mercado in seventh. Here we go, onto the back straight. Can anybody make a move? Can Marco Melandri use that slipstream? Could Chaz Davies try another move at turn six and hopefully not leave his braking as late as he did during race one yesterday? No big moves there as Johnny does continue to lead as we make the way up the hill through 16 into 17. I'm not sure exactly what's happening with Jonathan, but he, he did set the fastest lap of the race on the second lap, but his pace has dropped right off since then, and he's just doing high 51s now and really just letting the rest of the field come back towards him, and uh, we'll just have to wait and see if maybe Jonathan's just taking it a little bit easy in this early stage of the race. Maybe he's on that tire that's on a bit of a knife edge, 
and he's just trying to be wary of what happened to Chaz Davis yesterday with Davis saying that uh, in that final third of the race the tyre started to go off and as the weight transferred from the back to the front of the bike on the brake it just unsettled him a little bit maybe Jonathan Ray is just thinking in terms of what happened to Davis yesterday but it definitely looks like he's riding well within himself after setting a fast pace at the start of the race Exactly, as you say, it does open up about 0.3 of a second over the land. That's very, very little in this tight, tight super white class. Here you can see Lowe's sticking to the back of the Italian Mark from Landry. Once again, an incredible ride by Taddy Mercado. Fought for that Stock 1000 Championship last year. It was, in all honesty, bad luck that denied him that championship. A technical problem in the very last round prevented him from even starting the race. He's back in World Superbike to prove a point, to prove that he should be on one of the top bikes in this class. And I think he's putting his name in a fair few shot windows already. Yeah, and you could hear it down on the grid from Sean Muir just saying that uh, the job that Iota and Mercado have done this weekend, fair play to them. But the SMR team just not able to match what we've seen from Mercado this weekend. You can see Eugene Laverty just at the front of this train of bikes in the battle for eighth. But uh, difficult return to World SBK for Laverty. And uh, it looks like another difficult and long day for the Irishman on that Aprilia. As we said once again, Jordi Torres recovering from a disastrous start to be out there fighting inside the top ten. Like it's Aprilia versus Honda versus BMW Power down the back straight. Nobody able to make any serious inroads. Laverty alongside Melanie, one of the fastest down that back straight. No problem, as we heard, with the, with the power plant of that RSV4. Then Ramos there, he's currently in 11th. Could be a good result for the Spanish rider as well. Yeah, just at the back of this group, Javi Fares recovering um, after yesterday's incident to uh, get through into 12th on Nicky Hayden as well. So good stuff from Fares on the Barney Ducati. You can see a bit of a gap developing there from Chaz Davis back towards Tom Sykes. Around about one and a half seconds now, so it has opened up. And uh, we've now got a leading group of five with uh, Sykes caught in sixth and Tani McCann just behind him as well. So looks like it's just coming down to these five guys right now. Maybe Tom Sykes, after being uh, quite ill during the week, maybe just uh, struggling a little bit just to get the most from himself in these early stages of the race. Exactly. Everybody seems to be just watching and waiting. Of course, as we heard, the wind has everybody a bit nervous. Nobody trying to make any rash moves in this leading group now. About five riders as Sykes and Mercado have dropped back a bit as we ride with them through turn nine. The bottom of that hour on course are around turn ten. A big, long, sweeping left-hand bend here in Aragon. On board there with Johnny Ray, the champion, looking up. JonathanRay.com, his personal website. With him in the lead, 0.2 of a second ahead of Marco Melandri. Not too many changes down the timing trends as Melandri still right with Jonathan Ray. Jonathan Ray tries to open up a gap, but then Melandri is able to respond and keep him honest. Hasn't been able to show him a front wheel just yet, but Melandri is definitely sitting in there and has the pace to at least match Jonathan. Not yet sure about overtaking. Look at that camera shake around in the wind down the back straight. Yeah, the pace right now, Harry, it is quite a lot slower than what we would have expected. Last time around, Jonathan Ray, Marco Melandri with 51 sixes, 51 sevens. So not exactly the fast pace that we saw yesterday. And that's probably why Chaz Davis and Jonathan Ray, yesterday they broke away from the rest of the field. Today, it's a lot more of a battle for both of them, just with the pace a little bit slower. So just uh, whether or not we haven't seen Jonathan Ray try and pull the pin yet, we wait and see, but Chaz Davis trying to get down the inside of Marco Milan of uh, Michael Vandemar. Good move on the way into turn one. Davis starting to make a little bit of progress through that lead group. And the key thing for Davis is he's got to make these moves now, just make them nice and comfortable and be in the right place for those final couple of laps. Yesterday we saw really a, a rider right on the limit from Chaz Davis. He said that the tyre had gone off, he said the bike just wasn't quite as consistent as he needed it to be. But uh, he needs to just make advantage of it now and uh, try and get himself into that lead fight again. You can see Alex Lowe's right there with Chaz Davis's teammate Marco Melandri and uh, really starting to hurry and pressure the Italian. Yeah, it looks like already Chaz Davis is starting to make up a fair bit of ground through the first sector. He's 0.7 down on Lowe's now. He's just half a second down and no doubt when they go through the third sector that will be an even tighter time. Interesting to see if Michael Vandermark as well can respond and can close down the gap to Davies. It does definitely seem like Davies is the fastest rider on track now as they come through turn 10 once again. The third timing sector should be any moment now. Yes, Davies has now closed down the gap from 0.5 to 0.2. Davies is absolutely flying. Watch out, the Welshman is on a charge. He's going to be harassing Lowe's any second now as Johnny continues to just set a nice steady pace. 151.5 at the front. Yeah, you can see still Kawasaki from Ducati from Yamaha from Ducati from Yamaha. It's a good variety up at the front of the field 
in this second race here in Aragon. But uh, only about one second between uh, the leading groups, really. And you can see Chaz Davis just getting a run on Alex Lowe's and able to make that move on the way into turn 16. Comfortable move there for Davis, just taking advantage of the drive from that Ducati out of turn 15, the first gear. Uh, left hander leading on to the back straight. It's a good move there from Davis and uh, makes it stick quite comfortably. Now the key thing for Lowe's is just to stick with Davis and see if he's able just to stay in this scrap for the podium. Exactly. See Davis with the fastest lap of the race now as well. First man to dip into the one minute fifties. And uh, solid stuff there from Davis just to bring in round about seven tenths, three quarters of a second on the race leader. We can see Xavi Fares. He was on fire yesterday. He's doing his best just to heat up the action in the midfield now. And that is where he crashed at turn one. Yes, I tried to move on seven barrel, couldn't quite get through there, their brother behind the yellow and green of Ramos. Looks like a great battle here between Eugene Laverty and Jordi Torres. Interesting to see Ramos ahead of both. There we go, Torres up the inside of Eugene Laverty. They had a pretty good fight in Thailand as well. Fighting for, you know, that top 10 position, currently fighting for eighth place here. Looks like Ramos is now right on the back of Eugene Laverty. We might have an all Spanish battle for eighth place in just a couple of corners time if Ramos can muscle his way through on the Irish ride. And as you say, Torres, they're doing a, Torres doing a great job. Forres doing an incredible job given the injuries that he's riding with. Those birds must be incredibly painful to ride with. And Torres, top six yesterday, started on the front row in race two. Terrible opening lap, but he's managed to recover quite well to get through to eighth. He's been fast all weekend on that BMW. Right from free practice, one where he's fourth fastest. And uh, Torres just saying, right from the start of the weekend, it really felt like he was able to really connect with the BMW here this weekend and uh, building on what he did last time out in Thailand as well where he had a strong top uh, top five finish in race two. Another solid lap for Chaz Davies looks to be about to be completed. Davies now right on the back of his teammate as well just ahead but it is this battle for the top eight that is so so hot. Great fighting throughout the world Superbike Championship there. We see Bridal up the inside looking for a way through on Ramos. He gets ahead through turn 16. Will he run it a bit wide? Can Ramos Keep the title line. No, it looks like that Honda is all okay there. We can see the top five closing up once again. Davies right behind Molandry there. It's Ducati versus Ducati as they try and chase down the number one of Jonathan Ray. Great to see the action still bubbling up here with nine laps to go. About half race distance. We've just crossed over half race distance here at Motorland Aragon. And no clear favourite for this race just yet. Both the Yamahas there as well. Looks like Sykes is now well and truly dropped off this battle. Almost three seconds behind this leading pack. Mikado, he did well, but he has now also dropped back six seconds off the lead and about three, and a, three seconds back from Sykes as well. So he's going to have to be careful that the likes of Torres, Laverty, Forres, Ramos and Bridal don't catch up to the Aprilia rider as well. There you can just see the progress from Chaz Davies. Tenth on the grid, sixth, fifth, now up to third. Pretty steady progress. We've seen him come back for a fair few races in race two, so good practice. Of course, unfortunately, this race two grid move was caused by a crash and not by finishing on the podium in race one, as he would have liked. And when that uh, grid two change was initially announced just before Christmas, I think everyone was a little bit anxious about how it was going to work. But as you can see, the fast riders still find a way to get through to the front. And you've got Jonathan Ray, winner from yesterday, winner from the opening five races, able to come through from ninth on the grid into the lead. You've got Marco Melandri, who was eighth on the grid for this race. Chaz Davis, tenth on the grid, all able to make progress. Tom Sykes, as we said, his progress stalled a bit, possibly just due to bit of fatigue from that illness, but uh, Tom Sykes able to start quite well, get through to the front of the pack, so really good to see just uh, with uh, that grid change still allowing for us to have good races on Sunday. You can see Chaz Davis just trying to get a bit racy there with his teammate Marco Melandri. Good drive on the way out of that last corner, but so difficult to make a move on uh, Marco Melandri because he's so small you're able to get himself tucked right in, but Chaz Davis with a lot of confidence into turn one as we saw a few times yesterday. And uh, Davis makes another move into turn one. He did the same on Marco, on uh, Michael Vandermark a couple of laps ago. So now we've got Davis and Ray out in front once again. We saw what it was like yesterday. And we know that Chaz Davis has said his goal now is just to win races and uh, hopefully get back into the title contention. But uh, Chaz Davis now just going to try and hunt down Jonathan Ray. The gap as they came across the line was only a couple of tenths. So uh, Chaz Davis now just trying to put himself right there with only a, couple of, with, uh, only a third of the race still remaining. Yeah, it looks like there could be an issue for Nicky Hayden down in 18th place, just ahead of Russo and Badovini. 
pulling Simone there in 16th. Breidenberger currently rounding out the points in 15th as we continue to watch this incredible battle for the lead. Chaz now trying to close in on Johnny. Meanwhile, Lowe's looks to have made up ground on Marco Melandri as well. Lowe's looking to return to the podium for the first time since race two in Thailand back in 2015 when he's still riding the Suzuki for that Crescent team. Yeah, that was the last race before the change of the electronics as well for uh, the Suzuki squad that year. They'd won the first race, podium in the second round, and uh, now just trying to get back into that podium fight again. It's been a good start to the year for the Crescent Run Yamaha squad with a lot of, and that looks like, Is it that... looks like it's Lowe's that's ran off there at uh, at turn 13. So uh, Lowe's out of contention in this race. We'll wait and see if we can see him in the background, but uh, yeah, definitely was Lowe's in the background there, just running off track. And uh, that just elevates Vandermark to fourth, Sykes to fifth. Disaster for Lowe's there. Such a strong ride. No doubt that podium will come very, very soon. Commentator's curse from us, Steve. Hopefully he doesn't listen back to the commentary and blame us too much for that one. Here we go. What happened here? Just look at the back of your screens there. Looks like it's going a bit too hot. See the third bike in that group just on the curbs, maybe just unsettle the bike a little bit on the brake. And Lowe's just have to bail out and uh, abort that corner. But Lowe's re resumes the race. He's still in 13, so he's still in the fight for points. And uh, we'll just wait and see what the gaps are as he comes across the line. Exactly. Now it does now look like it will be Hon it will be Kawasaki versus Ducati once again at the front. Marco Melandri now closing back in on his teammate Chaz Davies. They don't want to fight too much and give Jonathan Ray any space. Johnny currently leading by about a third of a second from the Aruba.it pairing. There you can see the times, almost identical lap times from both Ray and Davies. With just seven laps to go come down the Aragon corkscrew once again. Look at to the left. Michael Vandermark still very, very strong there in fourth. Going to pretty, be a pretty lonely race for him. A second back on this leading group, but three seconds clear of Tom Sykes now up into fifth. Teddy Mercado then promoted to sixth ahead of Torres and Flores. They're fighting for top Spanish honours with Laverty in ninth and then Ramos there in tenth place. Yeah, some really good stuff from Flores just to get through into that top ten and into eighth position. He's right there with Jordi Torres as well. Only Half a second separating the two Spanish riders. And we've just seen Nicky Hayden dive into the pits as well, so clearly an issue for the American. Pretty disappointing for him after fighting for that top 10 in race one. Johnny Ray leads, but he's got company in the form of two Ducatis, the number seven and the number 33, right behind him as they rip down that back straight. We were chatting to Johnny Ray yesterday, and he said the Ducati is so strong out of that turn 15. Their low end power, their acceleration off the corner is just a bit too much for that Kawasaki to hold him off. And you can see here now, Harry, just with these two Ducatis chasing down Jonathan Ray and Wilde. But you can see Chaz Davis, he's made a few moves into turn one already this race, and Davis gets down the inside of Jonathan Ray. He did it yesterday. Every time he was behind Jonathan, he immediately tried to answer the call and get through on the Kawasaki rider. But you can see Jonathan Ray, this is where he was so strong yesterday. But trying to make a run on Davis, it could open the door here for Marco Melandri to come through. This is going to be an all-out brawl. Marco Melandri right in there as well. Johnny Ray needs to be careful here. Both of these Ducati riders hungry, hungry for their first win of the season. Nicky Hayden has retired, unfortunately, from this race, pulling into the pits. Not sure what the issue was there, but it is Davies who leads from Ray. Marco Melandri there in third as well, neck and neck. You can throw a handkerchief over these three riders right now with just six laps to go. Davies pushing hard to try and open advantage. We saw him pushing to the limit in race one yesterday. Pushed a bit over that limit and unfortunately crashed. Johnny will know that he has a lot more to lose than Davies in this situation. In the sixth race of the year, Harry, five wins so far for Jonathan Ray, but we've had two really close races in Australia. A great scrap yesterday and this scrap now as well. So while Jonathan's got a 100% record right now, he has had to fight for it on more than one occasion. You can see Ray now just having to try and stick with Chaz Davis. This is where Davis was strong yesterday, particularly the exit of this chicane. Coming out from turn 15, really that drive from the Ducati from first gear, second gear, third gear, really strong. Jonathan Ray said he didn't feel like he was going to be able to make a move into turn 16 yesterday. So let's see if uh, Marco Melandri can get through here on Davis. You can see on uh, Jonathan Ray, you can see Marco Melandri just able to use that bit of a slipstream, get himself tucked in and uh, pick up a little bit of gap there to Jonathan Ray. But uh, Melandri stays in second. And uh, now the key thing for Ray is good run through the first two sectors of the lap. This is where he was really strong yesterday. Needs to stay with Chaz Davis.
Ashley Davies looking pretty comfortable in the lead. Davies with the fastest lap of the race so far, a 150.976. So Davies looks like he was saving it right for the end, trying to avoid those issues he had yesterday with the tyre. Johnny Ray still right behind him, about a third of a second separated them across the line. Here is a replay of Davies through turn 16 and 17. Melandry there, like jittering around a bit. Landry running a slightly different, slightly shorter swing up to the one that Chaz Davies chooses to run on that Ducati. But both swing arms seem to be working perfectly. Johnny Ray has closed down the gap, just a tenth of a second between him and Chaz right now. Look at them all there, neck and neck. Just a couple of bike lanes between all three riders. Five laps to go here in Motorland, Aragon. Yeah, and both the Ducati riders, Melandri and Davis, the two red bikes are running the SC0 compound rear tire, so the softer compound rear tire. And this is the stage of the race yesterday where Chaz Davis said that the balance of the bike changed and this is where he started to feel the bike get a little bit unsettled underneath him. The race pace today is very different to what we saw yesterday, so maybe that issue won't affect uh, Davis quite as much as what it did in yesterday's race. Oh, big moment there for Marco Melandri as he tried to tip it into the right-hander. He's dropped off a couple of bike planks as well. Maybe it's that same issue that Davies experienced with the tyres starting to drop off. Hopefully we will get a replay of that moment for Marco Melandri. Vandermark there now about three seconds off this battle. Sykes about five seconds off this battle. Still top five results for both of them as Marco Melandri tries to recover from that moment. Chaz Davies, as I said, able to stretch that advantage in those final two seconds. So much power with that Ducati in the low end, just keeping Johnny Ray at bay. Five laps to go. Countdown to final few laps. Meanwhile, Leon Camia up into 11th. He said to you on the grid, Steve, that he wanted to be in that top 10. And for Camia, that could certainly be a possibility with Ramos just ahead of him. Yeah, you'd imagine that Camia the last few laps around has been quicker than uh, Ramos as well. About a quarter of a second, half a second each time. So we should be able to get right there with the Spanish rider in that battle for 10th. This should be a replay of the moment that uh, we just saw for uh, Marco Melandri as he gets on the gas. You can a see wobble there. Good recovery there from Melandri. Gets lucky there to be able just to have the bike come back underneath him. But good stuff from Melandri. He's still in that fight. It hasn't spooked him. And you can see Chaz Davis and Jonathan Ray just uh, battling once again. This is really what we saw yesterday as well. The different lines of these two bikes. Jonathan Ray actually said afterwards in uh, the interviews on worldsbk.com that he felt that the door was being opened in a couple of unusual places from Chaz Davis with those bikes working so differently to one another. Yeah, but it looks like, unfortunately, Alex De Angelis has crashed at turn 17. Disappointment for the former MotoGP rider, but no disappointment for fans watching along here with this battle for the lead. Looks like Chaz Davies once again able to open up that gap. Jonathan Ray really, really strong in that middle part of lap. Marco Melandri now closing down again. Here's where he had that moment in the change of direction before. No such issues for the number 33. This time as Chaz Davies continues to try and forge ahead, their confirmation that Alex De Angelis has unfortunately fallen. So the 200th British winner yesterday, Harry. Could we get the 100th Italian race win in World SBK today with Marco Melandri just looking like he's still, gonna, he's still got the potential there to make the moves on Ray and get with Davis. And you can see down that back straight, this is where the real advantage for Melandri is. And he gets through on, the, on uh, Jonathan Ray just on the way into that final corner. But Ray is fighting back around the outside. Those different lines again from the Kawasaki's and the Ducati's. Just uh, really bringing them into different parts of the racetrack and see Jonathan Ray trying to answer back with a tighter exit through that last corner. But comfortable enough there for Marco Melandri to come across the line. You can see how much it means inside the Italian crew as well. 1-2 for Ducati right now. And this is exactly what Chaz Davies needs, exactly what he would have wanted. Melandri and Johnny slowing each other down with just three laps to go, allowing him to just slowly, slowly eke out an advantage. A tenth here, a tenth there, currently half a second clear of his teammate, but watch out, Johnny's coming, slips through on Marco Melandri with ease there. A good move there from Johnny Ray, and you said slow them down. Last time around, these guys were faster than uh, Chaz Davis as well, but Marco Melandri a tenth of a second quicker, so the scrap last time around didn't really cost them too much, but where they're making the moves now, that tends to really slow you down, cost a bit of lap time, but it's Jonathan Murray back into second, and uh, Marco Melandri in third. Yeah, meanwhile, Sykes does seem to be closing down Michael Vandermark, maybe a second wind for the British rider, maybe Michael Va Vandermark struggling a bit with tyres, looks like Teddy Mercado has had a bit of an issue, has dropped down, it is now Fores up into six, even with those burns, he's currently the top Spanish rider ahead of Torres, then Mercado as I said in eighth, Lavity ninth, then Leon Camier there, achieving his goal right now of a top ten, that's somewhat tricky 
MV Augusta. Johnny Ray trying to close down his great rival Chaz Davies once again. It's now 0.4 of a second. It was 0.6 at the start of the lap. Jonathan's fired up for this week. He said all the way through winter that there was two circuits he really wanted to win at Aragon and Donington. He won yesterday after a great scrap with Davis, but you definitely get the feeling Ray wants to beat him on the track as well. Over 18 laps, not just force a mistake. So now we've got uh, two and a bit laps to go just to see if Jonathan Ray is able to close that gap down on Chaz Davis. Around about three quarters of a second as they came through that last time. being half a second now, sorry, as they came through the last time. And being this is, as we said, the area of the track, Davis is really strong. But two laps to go now, and it really could be anyone's race. Exactly, just 10 kilometers left around this Aragon circuit. Johnny Ray there, the rear sliding out under the brakes, leg out to try and set himself. Chaz Davis there, there you can see the gap closed by 0.19 of a second, almost two tenths of a second. Currently stands at half a second. As we said, Dave is really strong in that last part of lap. Johnny Ray now. This comes to where Johnny is so strong on track from turn three all the way down to about turn 13, 14 is where Johnny is able to make up a fair bit of time on Chaz Davies. There you can see the Kawasaki rider closing in now. Just a couple of bike lengths between them as they push those Pirelli tyres to the limit here. 0.2 of a second between them as they went through the second sector there. Number seven leads number one. Just one and a half laps to go here through turn eight, then flick it left into turn nine. Johnny right on the back of Chaz Davies. This is exactly where he needs to be. He just needs to try and stay close to Davies. Try and leverage away through during the middle of the lap to then hopefully maintain a bit of a lead into the final lap. Yeah, Harry, this is what we came to Aragon to see. A scrap between Davis and Ray going right down to the wire. And again, both of the top two riders in the world over the last couple of years really just giving us exactly the show that we came here to see. Exactly, here we go. This is where Davies is strong. Can he open up enough of a gap to hold off the reigning world champion and end that run of wins? Johnny Ray looking to outdo Neil Hodgson. Neil Hodgson got nine wins in a row to start the season in 2003. Can Jonathan Ray keep that record alive? There we go, 0.2 of a second through the third sector, down the back straight for Chaz Davies. A fair distance there for Jonathan Ray. It's almost time to begin the last lap through turn 16 for the second last time, then up into turn 17 on the left-hand side of that tyre for so, so long. Here we go. Up onto the start finish straight and we are underway. The last lap of the Pirelli Aragon round. Chaz Davies with the fastest lap of the race so far, 150.954. Such consistent pace at the end for the Welsh rider. What can Johnny Ray do? Can he close that gap or has Chaz Davies done it? Has he put his demons to rest here in Moland Aragon to return to the top step of the podium for the first time since the final race of the season in Qatar 2016? Here we go, making our way towards turn five. Johnny Ray making up pretty rapid progress. Very different line there for Chaz Davies. Bit of a wobble. Johnny Ray right on the back of Davies now. Up the inside. It is neck and neck. The number one slide through on the number seven. Davies trying to make it go around the outside. Can't quite do it. Johnny Ray trying to stand up. No, it is Davies who does lead as they charge down towards turn eight. This is Davies country now. Jonathan Ray really has to pull something out. He's right on the back of that Ducati. Couldn't get much closer if he tried. There we look back at the Kawasaki on board with Davies. He has a bit of an advantage there. They were neck and neck through that second sector. What can Jonathan do as they make their way through turn 11? Hard on the brakes into turn 12. And then trying all he can to close it down. He's right behind him. This is exactly like the penultimate lap of race one, where Chaz Davies made that mistake in turn 16. Here we go. 14, 15, 16, 17, only four corners left. Three corners left now, it's all about the run on the straight. Jonathan Ray goes to the inside line, tries to make Davies stand up, they almost touch. Oh, big moment there for Jonathan Ray, but he's still right in the slipstream. Can he do it? No, it looks like Chaz Davies has managed to break Jonathan Ray. A dramatic moment there through turn 15. Jonathan Ray, can he carry enough corner speed to try and get him on the run to the line? Or will Davies hold on for his first victory through turn 16? Just one corner left, then it's the drag to the line. It looks like Davies has done this. Yes, he has. Chaz Davies, take a bow, sir. You've ended the reign of Jonathan Ray. Taken to the top step of the podium. Marco Melandri back there, shake of the head. Pump of the fist for Chaz Davies. He returns to the top step of the podium, as we said, for the first time since 2016. Jonathan Ray has finally been beat. Marco Melandri third. Tom Sykes there up in fourth ahead of Michael Van der Mark. A drag to the line between four, between Torres there and Mercado. An incredible ride. 
for Fores in sixth place, given the circumstances. He takes home top Spanish honours. Torres there in seventh. More solid points for him. Mercado in eighth once again on his return. Once more as the top Aprilia. Lavity there in ninth. Leon Camia achieves his goal of the top ten ahead of Ramos. Bridal in 12th. Lowe's recovers to 13th ahead of Krumnaka. Julian Simon points again. 21st World Superbike win there. Equaling two-time champion Max Biaggi. What a great stat there for Chaz Davies. Three times seven is 21. Of course, the number three, the number that Max Biaggi usually ran, being run here this weekend by Julian Simon. All the Ducati team delighted with that result. What a fantastic last lap. Jonathan Brake gave it his all. Here's the replay. Hard on the brakes into 14. Johnny tried to go for the inside line here into 15. Chaz Davies trying to carry as much corner speed as he could. Slammed out the inside. Bit of a touch there between Johnny and Chaz. Here we go. On board with the reigning champion. Up the inside. We'll see Chaz on the left of our picture. There we go. Bit of a wobble there as the Ducati does slide through. Big shake of the head for Chaz Davies. Back on top. He couldn't get it done in race one. But the pace is still there for Chaz Davies. All he can do now is win the points gap. Currently 50 points between him and Jonathan Ray as Davies moves back into second place. 145 versus 95 points. We're off to Assen at the end of April. Who knows what will happen there. One of the most historic circuits in the world. Always throws up some great racing for us to draw, enjoy. But it was great racing here in Motorland, Aragon. What an incredible super sport race we had. And then an unbelievable end to a dramatic World Superbike race two here. Chaz Davies back on top of the world on board that Ducati. Of course, we will be at the service Dutch round from the 28th to the 30th of April for round four of the World Superbike Championship. Something very unfamiliar for Jonathan Ray this year, rolling to the number two spot in Park Ferme after a race. Still job well done for the champion. Disappointed with that one. But you know you're in the form of your life and you're disappointed with second place. Congratulating the Ducati team there. Thumbs up to his team. Shaking the hands of everybody over there for Chaz Davies side of the garage. Big congratulations from the Kawasaki team who's had so much success with. There you can see dragging his elbow all scuffed up Alpen style leathers. Mark and Landry try as he could. Couldn't quite get the job done to take the victory. Gave it a very good go, still on the podium once again. There are the race results. Davies from Bray, from Milandri, from Sykes, from Vandermark, from Forres, Torres, Mercado, Laverty, Camia, Ramos. Stefan Bridal there in 12th. More points for him as his teammate Hayden was forced to retire with a technical issue. Big hug and a big lift up there for Chaz Davies. Camia rounds out the top 10 ahead of Ramos. Bridal and Lowe's once again. Lowe's 13th. Krumnak at Simon there, rounding out the points ahead of Ryderberger. Badovini. The last of the finishes in 17th place. Here are the championship standings. Ray from Davies, from Sykes, from Melandry, from Lowe's. Pretty big points gaps emerging already. Vandermark in sixth, ahead of Torres, ahead of Forrest. Nice battle there for top Spaniard. Just four points splitting them. Camia still in there for that top seven battle. Then Lavity in 10th overall, just ahead of Hayden and Bridal. Ryderberger 13th, Ramos 14th. And then Leandro Mercado jumps straight to 15th in the championship despite having only competed in these two races here. What can we hear from Davies? Explain later, but enjoy Explain later. Clearly heard us trying to have a cheeky listen in to what was going on. But what a great race from Chaz Davies. Absolutely awesome performance from him, from Jonathan Ray, and from Marco Melandri as well. All three of those Guys will be enjoying the celebrations tonight, especially Chaz Davies. As he finally ends the rule of Ray. There you can see it run a bit wide. Jonathan trying to close up the gap. Might do it. Go on that last lap again through turns 13, 14, and 15. There through turn 14. Johnny tried to take the inside line, tried to force Chaz to stand up, but Chaz was just too tight there using a bit of the rumble strips it looked like as we go on board with Chaz Davies. There you can see just how tight it was. Yep, just clipping the curving there. Able to stay upright and drag it out to the line to take his first race victory of 2017. An unbelievable performance from the Welsh rider on the number seven machine, as we saw there, equaling the winning record of Max Biaggi. Stefan Bridal trudges back to the pits. Difficult race for him down in 12th. 
But as we said, no doubt Honda will benefit a lot from the test here on Monday. They have a fair few new parts planned ahead of their home race in Aston. Of course, the Honda team once again run by Ten Carter, the Dutch outfit. Had their team launch in had their team launch in Austria due to that Red Bull sponsorship. A great looking bike. A shame we haven't yet seen it fighting at the front. But it will eventually get there. The Honda Racing Corporation don't do things by half. That's for sure. There as we just watch everybody getting their interviews down there in Park for mate. All the various TV channels and broadcasters. Lowe's there was looking so strong. Unfortunate mistake for him, but the potential is definitely there for Lowe's to once again return to the podium as he trudges back in to the Yamaha box. Yeah, once again, just watch the back of photo there. The blue bike tried to close in on Mark and managed carrying too much corner speed, forced to sit up, ran off track across the gravel onto the escape road. There, and then forced to rejoin. Big stoppy as he tries to get it turned around rejoin the race. Still able to pick up some points and you know every point does matter in this tight, tight World Superbike Championship. Here's the number two man, Johnny Ray. Jonathan Ray, first time this year where you've had to finish second, but a great scrap again with Chaz Davis for the run. Yeah, honestly, I, I really enjoyed that race. Um, got to the front rather quite early, but uh, with I couldn't make a break because it was so windy in the straight, the group stayed together and then when Chaz came past, he had a little bit more a bit more pace and I up I up my pace again to try and go with him and he made a few mistakes but none that I could really go through clean and make stick and in the last lap I just fought fought for a win and I tried in a few places but it didn't, didn't work out in the end uh, so congratulations to him honestly to come from a big crash yesterday and to win today was uh, you know really impressive so Congrats to him and to Caddy, but I'm really happy with the way we rode today. We got 45 points this weekend when I wasn't feeling the best, and but the bike was working really good, so look forward to rolling to Aston now. Thanks, Johnny. Tell how hard that race was there. But a great battle. Riders usually enjoying a great battle. That's what we come to motorcycle races to see. It's the fastest men and women in the world going at it on the best bikes in the world. Uh, Johnny Ray forced to finish in second for the first time this year. But a third straight title still looking pretty likely after just three rounds. 50 point gap over Chaz Davies already. Hey, that is a pretty excellent start to the season. Wasn't quite able to get Neil Hodgson's record. Damage limitation as well for Tom Sykes, as we heard. Bit of a sick boy this weekend, struggling. Bit of a cold, bit of food poisoning, just not feeling great. Able to manage a podium and a fourth place. Pretty good given the circumstances. Great to see Tom Sykes now coming much stronger in that race too. As we said, changing his style to adapt to the new bike just that little bit more. And doing a fairly good job of it now. Able to stick with the likes of Davies and Ray when they make those incredible starts. And now it's time for the number three man, number 33, Marco Melandri. Marco Melandri, another podium this season and uh, getting closer and closer to that win. Yeah, it's, uh, it's always nice to be on the podium and the race was pretty nice and uh, at the beginning I thought uh, Johnny tried to, to, leave, uh, to leave the company but uh, I could catch him and the pace was uh, quite okay but suddenly uh, after like 10 laps I started to struggle with the front and for me it was impossible to break harder and when Charles arrived I just tried my best, I passed um, Johnny but he passed me back so easy so for me it was no chance to fight with him. I made a few mistakes more and I almost went down a few times, so I prefer to, to bring home some point. And it's okay, just it's something is missing to fight with the top guys and we will work harder. Difficult race there for Marco Melandri. Struggling a bit to stay upright, but as he said, board at home score points. So, so important. Melandri fourth in the championship right now. 81, 10 points behind Tom Sykes, 64 behind Jonathan Wright. Then he's five points behind his teammate. Sorry, ten, sorry, 14 points behind his teammate. Chaz Davies, just need to work on my math a bit there. So, you know, a top two in the championship, still well on the cards for Marco Melandri, but beaming is Chaz Davies. Chaz Davies, first win of the year and a great scrap again with Johnny for that. Yeah, definitely a good battle, that one. Um, 
what we needed after a weekend like we've had. It's been an absolute disaster pretty much from the, the first lap of free practice um, on Friday till, well, drama till the last lap of the race, really. It's, we've really been on the back foot. We've had uh, a couple of things, well, many things go wrong. And to finish like this is what everybody deserves. I think that we've, uh, we really shouldn't be in this position. It's, uh, and I'm quite surprised that we are with the, with the amount of things that have been thrown at us all weekend. But we've uh, kept our he heads above water and uh, brushed off quite a big crash yesterday. And uh, yeah, glad to be standing here in the in number one spot. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Back to the best after a difficult weekend for Chaz Davies. Saw at the end of last year that when his back is up against it, Davies can produce incredible winning streaks. Could it be like Troy Bayless and Colin Edwards all those years ago where it does go down to that last round? Could the first half be Johnny's and could the second half be Chaz Davies? We'll have to wait and see. His World Superbike season is only just getting started, of course. We will head to Assen for round four, then off to Imola, Donington, Mizano, Laguna Seca, where it's just the World Superbike class, then the Lausitz ring in Germany before returning to Portimao in Portugal, then to Magnicor, then to, Her then to Hereth for the second last round, and finally to Qatar to race under the floodlights for round 13. Big handshake there between Johnny and Chaz. Great race between the pair. There we see the three podium finishes. Their bikes down there in park for mate. Pretty familiar sight for us. What a great result. There you can see the bandages stretching all the way up to his chin to salvage sixth place, given the drama that he experienced yesterday. An incredible result for the Spanish rider. Really, really commendable. I know that lots of you may have seen the, uh, the fireball video of Forez, but be sure to send your well wishes and your congratulations to the Spanish rider because to come back from that is something to truly be applauded. There you can see everybody waiting around for the Super Sport 300 race coming up next and then finally won the day with the Stock 1000 race. So still a fair bit of action to get through here. Number seven back on top in Aragon. He did the double last year, couldn't quite do it this year. But there's still more to come from Ducati and from Chaz Davies in 2017. Can we go? Not great, to be honest. There we go, just waiting for the podium. Another great feeling, also. Um, Rio was, um, was definitely better. Go, 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 go. Change this morning. Better rear, there we heard for Chaz Davies as they all just chat about it on the podium. Chat there about tactics and about the changes that they made. It seemed to be working pretty well for everybody. Certainly the changes worked for Chaz Davies as he now gets set to climb to the top step of the podium for the first time in 2017. Johnny Ray there demoted to two seconds for the first time. But the double world champion still does have a pretty healthy lead of 50 points over that man there on the top step of the podium. Sykes third and Marco Melandri third on the podium, fourth overall. There's the president of Motorland Aragon handing the third place trophy to Marco Melandri. Pretty solid return for Melandri having not raced a bike for a year and a half after that disastrous MotoGP return with Aprilia. The Aprilia now doing pretty well in MotoGP. Unfortunately, Marco Melandri not a part of that project. Melandri pleased as punch to be part of the Ducati family once again. Can't see Johnny Ray looking anywhere else but Kawasaki for the immediate future. So much success. Chaz Davies enjoying a fair bit of success as well with Ducati as he gets his first number one trophy of 2017. A nice bouquet of flowers as well. No doubt that'll be for a, for a lucky lady somewhere as we get ready to hear and the four Chaz Davies just after we have a member of the Ducati squad come to collect team's trophy there's Stefano Cocconi the team principal as the team representative his first time taking the podium this year the Kawasaki squad getting through a fair few team members up on the podium this year but the first for Ducati big applause there from everybody wife of Marco Melandri there just in the back of the shot as we prepare for the national anthem, hats off as we get set to listen in.
There we go. A proud, proud moment for Chaz Davies. Gets set to hear the Italian national anthem for the first time this year to celebrate Ducati as the winning manufacturer, finally ending Kawasaki and Jonathan Ray's dominant run. Applause there for everybody on the podium. An absolutely unbelievable race down to the wire. Once again in Motorland, Aragon. It may have been new in 2011, but it's become a firm favourite of fans and riders alike here in the heart of Spain. Action delivering every weekend. And the Ducati team representative getting absolutely soaked. Being dripping wet with this high wind isn't going to be fun for him. But the taste of victory will make it all worth it, no doubt. Of course, we still do have two more races to bring you today. The first ever World Super Sport 300 race coming up in just about 10 minutes' time. And the first Stock 1000 race of the year. Cheers there amongst the podium finishers. No hard feelings at all amongst them. They just talk about what happened during the race. Next round, we travel from Aragon in Spain up to the north of Europe to Assen, the Cathedral of Speed, the 28th to the 30th of April. Known for canals, clogs and windmills, Assen has also made a very, very fantastic motorcycle racing circuit. They'll be going a bit faster than the bikes which swarm the Dutch streets and a bit faster than the boats which cruise the canals. You can guarantee the action is going to be red hot once again. Watch out for Michael Vandermark. Always goes well in front of his home fans. There we go. The podium finishes just walking off there, getting ready to do their press duties. Always a tricky life for a top-level motorcycle racer. Lots of media commitments as they throw the flowers to their teams down below. Here we go as we get set to run through the final race results. Chaz Davies there, back on top. 25 points for him ahead of Jonathan Ray, who still picks up 20 points. Michael Landry in third. Sykes just off the podium. Michael Vandermark back in the top fives. five. Take a bow. Fores ahead of Torres for Spanish honours. Mercado there, a solid eighth. Ahead once again of Eugene Laverty. Leon Camia, job done. Top 10 for him ahead of Ramos. Bridal Lowe's Krumenacker. Simon Reiderberger there in 16th. And Ant Badovini a minute behind. But the last finish is Angelus. He unfortunately crashed out. And then Russo and Nicky Hayden just behind. They were both forced to retire with technical problems. Tough weekend for the Honda squad. They'll be looking to make amends at their home round in Assen, as you saw there, taking place on the 28th to the 30th of April. Hopefully the weather does play ball there. Holland known for some pretty wild weather. And here are the championship standings. 145 points for Jonathan Bray. 50 ahead of Chaz Davies, who's back into second place. Tom Sykes there dropped back down to third. Melandry steady in fourth, ahead of Lowe's. Michael Vandermark there in sixth. Torres, Fores, and Cambia. Nice mix of manufacturers up there. Bit of everybody in the top 10 as Eugene Labney moves into 10th. Ahead of Nicky Hayden, Stefan Bridal there. Marcos Reiderberg in 13th. Ramos in 14th, Mercado straight to 15th on his return. Randy Krumanaka just holding off to Angelus and Savadori unfortunately didn't race here this weekend due to that neck injury. Then in the team's championship, it is KRT leading ahead of Aruba.it Racing Ducati. Paddy Yamaha there in third ahead of Altair BMW. Red Bull Honda doing their best ahead of Barney Racing, Milwaukee, Aprilia, MV Augusta. And then Team Go 11, Kawasaki there in ninth place team standings. No surprise that it is much like the Riders Championship. Kawasaki who lead 24 points ahead of Ducati. So that battle for manufacturers on is still going on. Yamaha there with 74 points ahead of BMW. MV then Aprilia moving ahead of Honda. As they fight for 6th and 5th place. And we'll leave you now with the incredible highlights from race 2 here in Motorland Aragon. Fantastic race one, backed up by an even fiercer battle for supremacy in race two.